Everything in your life happens for a reason. Your responsibility is to look at these things in your life and ask this question, why now? You need activation energy to start the chain, to start to sit down, to start to get out of bed, to start to walk out the door. That's the key to creating any kind of change. This activation energy inside of you that causes the initial boom. And then what do we hear over time? Once you start, there's a chain reaction and that allows you to keep going. You have to act on your passion. You have to act on your inner drive. Don't let those feelings stay inside of you. You got to know what to do with them. You got to know how to make them work in order to get what you want. Don't keep it inside. You want to improve. You want to get better. You want to get on a workout program or a clean diet. You want to start a business. Where do you start? You start right here. And when do you start? You start right now. Everybody, at one point in time in your life, to be successful, you have to jump. Jumping is the hardest thing for people to do, but you have to jump. If you never jump, you'll never be successful. When you first jump, I guarantee you the parachute ain't gonna open. I promise you that. But guess what? Eventually it does open and then you start your glide, but it starts with the jump You have to jump man No matter how painful it is I got to keep going and I got to keep going because what is my passion? What is my focus your focus and your passion will numb you to failure and to pain of striving to get to where you're trying to go I don't accept that I am what I am and that that is what I'm doomed to be. No, I don't accept that. I'm fighting. I'm always fighting. I'm struggling and I'm scrapping and I'm kicking and clawing at those weaknesses to change them, to stop them. Some days I win. Some days I don't, but each and every day I get back up and I move forward with my fist clenched toward the battle, toward the struggle. And I fight with everything I've got to overcome those weaknesses and those shortfalls and those flaws. So literally, without goals, you're directionless. You will be used. See, people without goals get used by other people who have them. People that don't have goals work for people who do. And so you want to be someone who picks up and gets clear about what you want. Make a list, 101 goals. I want to go to Paris. I want to, you know, skydive. I want to bungee cord jump. I want to play the guitar. I want to learn to juggle. I want to learn two magic tricks for the kids. I want to go to the Olympics in Beijing. Whatever it is, make the list. You have to delete all the negativity in the world and focus on things that make it feel great. So you could focus on a relationship you have. You could focus on how much you've already learned in the last six or seven or eight days. You could focus on the people that love you. You could focus on your ability as a human being to change your life at any moment in time. You have to be crazy in believing what your goal and your passion is. Because when something is crazy, even though it's crazy, you still do it, right? <laughs> Every single person is designed from infancy with special talents and abilities that if you develop them to their height, can enable you to accomplish anything you want in life. Everyone is genetically structured to be able to do something superbly, to do something they enjoy, to do it well, and to get great satisfaction from it. There is no capability difference between you and someone you consider to be an ultimate role model of success. 
The only difference is they've learned to use their mind and body with more power on a consistent basis. They've learned to manage their state. They've learned to use their body effectively. Whether they know it or not consciously doesn't matter. A lot of people do things without being aware of how they do it. And they've learned to control their mental focus. Remember, whatever we concentrate our focus on consistently and strive to learn from and make new distinctions about, we will get great at. I want to reassure you that you can do it. I want you to reassure you that you can make the decisions. I want to reassure you that no matter what the night, no matter what the storm, no matter what the difficulty, there isn't anybody here that can't figure it out, find some things to do, step at a time, yes. Minute at a time, yes. Day at a time, yes. Week at a time, yes. But there isn't anything you can't walk away from. There isn't any challenge you can't overcome. I want you to have that kind of belief in yourself. You've got to believe in yourself. You just have to. And then you do it. You see it, you believe it, and then you do it. It's the hard part is getting over it in the beginning. Three weeks, it, it's, a, it's a habit. It will be ingrained in your central nervous system if you do this every day for three weeks. Studies, studies show this. The first hardest part of the first five days, once you do that, once you get over that, things become really much easier for you. And then you're on this path towards greatness. The anxiety goes away, the fear goes away, the stress goes away. The hardest part about getting a ship moving is the beginning. That's where, like, the NASA shuttles, the most fuel is used in that launch. That's where the most energy and effort is required. And we get caught up in the trap thinking that that's the energy required and the effort required throughout the entire process. And that's not the tr truth. You will adapt. It will be easier for you. But it's a matter of getting over that fear in the beginning to then get to that point where it's ingrained in your central nervous system. Then you're on autopilot. Like if you ever wrote a paper for school before and it's really hard in the beginning you procrastinate 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 and you just put it off and then it's like the night before or something that it's due and then you just like sit yourself down and do it and the first 15 minutes it's like writer's block it's hard and then you break through and then it's like you're on autopilot after a while. And it's like, where are these thoughts coming? It's just unbelievable how the brain works. And you're like, you're writing a million miles a minute. It's like thoughts that you never even thought of before are just coming out. I know this has happened to you. And then you have to almost pull yourself away because you have to go to bed to get some sleep because you're just like on this path. And that's how life is. Once you get involved in something, it just goes on autopilot to where you start thinking of like really elaborate stuff, higher level stuff that beginner people who are outside do not experience. Do not. So from the outside, they look at these successful people and they're like, how do they do this? I don't understand how they're able to do this. And of course you don't because you never immerse yourself in that process. But once you immerse yourself in that process, you could do it too. They are not made of something different, as different as you think they are. They're flesh and blood like you. But life is more about conditioning and habitual routines and stepping outside this comfort zone than it is about genetics. You have a genetic envelope, no question. And you may be endowed with certain gifts and qualities, but I guarantee you that many successful people wish they had qualities that you have. Because no one's perfect in this world. Everyone is imperfect, right? But you can't be on this quest to be perfect. You are imperfect, so the quest is not to be perfect. You will never get there. If that's your goal, you will fail in that goal. The quest is to be the best you. And the only way to be the best you is to break through your fears. 
because that is the brick wall to your comfort zone. And if you break down that brick wall, that comfort zone just expands, expands, and it knows no bounds. So literally everything on this planet could be within your comfort if you choose to break down those walls. You have your goals in life, your dreams, all these different pursuits, and instead of just starting, you know, just taking step by step taking action, you kind of just sit on the sidelines. You know, you wait for a contract or guarantee of success. You want this game plan or this map of every single step you're gonna have to take, when you're gonna have to take them, what kind of step to take, so it's very predictable and it's very safe. You know, you wanna see it all. You're like, okay, I don't just wanna jump in, you know, to this uncertainty and to the unknown. I wanna know, you know, I'm gonna do this, and then this is gonna happen, then I'm gonna do this, and uh, you're stuck in this painful emotional state. You know, you're in limbo instead of progressing or expanding. Uh, you're always doubting yourself. That burns you up inside, the fact that you're not progressing. Uh, you're killing your you know, purpose in life, let's just say, your course and purpose in life. You're just putting it on hold, and uh, it just gets worse and worse and worse. You know, because you hear it like, hey, have a logical game plan for every single step of the way. Plan, be very, you know, careful so you don't get into these like pitfalls. And the reason it's bad is, as I mentioned before, it's never going to happen. Okay, we live in a world that's just changing so fast that this long-term precise vision, it doesn't exist. Okay, not a single person I know can look into the future, say year, two year, three, four, five years ahead and know exactly all the different things that are going to happen and how he's going to achieve his goal. Everyone, of course, has a general vision and you should have that, like, hey, I want to be in this position here and continuously focus on that. But along the way, you're going to encounter many obstacles and a lot of them you just can't predict. They're just going to blow up in your face and if you're just waiting to be sure that every single step is there, you're done. Okay, on top of that too, guess what? You're going to be psyched out. Okay, you're going to be like, oh my God, there are all these steps to take and you're just never going to do it because it's overwhelming. Just do the first step. Even if you don't really know where the next one's going to be, just start now. Okay, on one hand, it's realistic and it's not too overwhelming. You know, whatever it is you're trying to pursue, there is something you can do right now. Even as you're watching this video, you can probably pause this video and do something that'll kind of kickstart you in the right direction. You won't get overwhelmed and guess what? It's gonna start building momentum. Okay, and this is key. Every single step of the way, it's a little easier to do the next step and the next step and the next step and the next step and then they just get bigger and bigger and bigger and it becomes easier and easier and easier. Do you know what makes someone successful? Do you? Three things. Three things will make you successful. A continuous interest in improving yourself, being self-aware, and work. And I mean lots of it. Improve yourself. Improve yourself continuously. Never stop developing yourself. Develop a passion for improving yourself. Develop a passion for learning. Improving yourself begins right where you are. Yes, improving yourself starts with an education. Improving yourself starts with school. You did not come to school to slack off. You did not come to fail. Instead, you came to learn to learn how to be great, to be the best leader, to be the best academic, to be the best at whatever you wanna do. Don't let your friends deter you. Don't let friends distract you. Develop yourself. Show them that there is better. Show them that you're different. Improve yourself. Study hard, study long. Give your all. Give it everything you got. Successful people don't get to where they are by following their friends or pleasing them. Instead, they lead. They lead and committed themselves to self-development. They exercise their mind. They learn. They study. They pass their exams. Nobody will do it for you. Only you can do it for yourself. Only you can put in the work. If you're not prepared, if you do not work, you will lose. You will never win. You will always be behind and you will never be great. To be successful at anything, you have to get to know yourself. You have to know who you are. 
You have to know what your strengths are. You have to know what your weaknesses are. You have to get to know what you like, what you don't like, what you're good at, and what you're not good at. What your learning styles are, where you study best. Learning about yourself will build your confidence. It will change your behavior. Studying will become easier. Passing your exams will become easier. It will get you places where you've never gone before. Getting to those places and staying there will take determination. It will require that you never give up. Never give up on your dreams. Never give up on your goals. Life will throw things at you. Teachers will throw exams at you. No one promised that life would be easy. What is promised is that you can do it. You can do it. You can win. You can pass your exams. You can be the best. You can achieve your goals. You can become whatever you desire to become. But you have to be determined. You have to want it bad. You have to want it so bad that you will never give up. You have to want it so bad that you're willing to lose sleep for it. You have to want it so bad that you're willing to lose friends over it. You have to want it so bad that you're willing to work hard for it. And never, ever give up. Giving up is not an option. If you can dream it, you can do it. If you can think it, you can do it. Just believe in yourself. Believe in your dreams and fight for it. Tell yourself that you are in it to win it. Tell yourself that you will continue trying. You will continue trying even if you fail. And when you fail, you get up and brush yourself off and try again. You will continue even if you laugh at. You will continue even if you lose. Because guess what? Life is not always about where you end up. It's about the journey. It's about the attitude. It's about the determination. It's about never giving up. You have to schedule your time. Don't just stuff studying in to cracks in your schedule. Your schedule should be built around studying. What does this mean? This means have an exact set time during the day when you start to study. For me, I remember it was about 6 p.m. I would always say to myself, okay, 6 p.m., I get back from school, I rest a little bit, and then at 6 p.m., that's my study time. It starts. How long does it go? Well, that depends on how much assignments and homework I have, but it would go for at least an hour or two, and sometimes it would go for four or five or six hours. And it would start at six, and you would usually end like around nine or 10 or, or after that, and it would vary. But I think what's really important is to have that starting time, six, no matter what, six, sit down and study. Open the books, sit down, study. It doesn't have to be six for you, just come up with your own time. And you're doing this every single day. What's important about this is that it leads us to the next point, which is you have to get comfortable and you have to slow yourself down in order to study effectively. You can't rush the studying process. And one of the secrets that I use is simply brute force, right? A lot of the issues as a student that I dealt with, the things that I couldn't understand, I just brute force them through repetition. And this repetition can take time. Also, you know, you have to be patient with yourself. Sometimes you're not gonna understand the problem right off the bat. So you just kind of repeat it, repeat it, mull it over, mull it over, and that means sometimes it takes you longer. So instead of finishing a quick little math assignment in an hour, it might take you three hours. But that's worth it if you calm yourself down, get comfortable, slow yourself down, kind of open yourself to absorbing this information. Right? This is where the love of it comes in. If you don't love it, and what you're doing is you're just kind of rush studying through stuff just to learn it, like cramming for an exam, that's just horrible. That's horrible. Because all you're trying to do is you're jumping, you're like a dog jumping through hoops. That's basically what you are when you're doing that. Because you're saying to yourself, well, I gotta pass this exam in order to get into college to get good grades so my parents like me. That's just hoops like a dog you're jumping through. Don't do that. Instead, what you think about is like this. Okay, this subject matter is really fascinating. Let me study more. Let me learn more. I want to know how math interconnects with, with history, and I want to know how history interconnects with science, and I want to know how this and this connect, and, and I want to know more depth about this thing here. That's how you got to think. I don't think there's any magic in being successful. And I'm not talking about making a million dollars or a billion dollars. I'm just talking about being successful. I'm talking about being successful in what you guys do at work. I don't think there's any magic. You got to work hard. Yeah. You got to respect the people around you and you just gotta go. I've never met a successful person that doesn't work hard. There are two rules that I always adhere to, and that is to work hard and be brave. 
And I think the essence of, of hard work is one that's pretty straightforward, is that you'll never be the best looking, you'll never be the tallest, most talented, most capable, you'll never have the most money. There will always be someone who's better at whatever you're doing than, when, what you, than you are. But you can always be the hardest working person in the room. And I think the hardest working person will always win. Who must you become in order to create what you want? What has to change about you? What is it that you're doing right now that would be a liability for you? As you begin to look toward the future and take inventory of yourself, what is it about you right now that you've got to leave this behind? Because this no longer fits. Looking at where you want to go and the kind of person that you must become, the kind of standards that you have for you, what is it that you must do differently? your mind of all distractions. I used to hold the record for the fastest to memorize a deck of cards in the United States. And sometimes before I would memorize a deck of cards, my brain would be worried about things in my life or things that were going on. So what I would do to clear my mind of all distractions is I would close my eyes and I would visualize those scenarios the way that I wish they were or the way that I hoped they would be one day. And then I would open my eyes, I would be relieved of that stress, and then I would memorize a deck of cards. Clear your mind of all distractions. Maybe close your eyes and visualize the things the way you wish they could be, and then focus on your studying. Depending upon how well you want to do, and particularly if you're starting a company, you need to work super hard. So what, what does super hard mean? Uh, well, when my brother and I were starting our first company, uh, in, instead of getting an apartment, we just rented a, a small office and we slept on the couch. Uh, and we, we showered at the, the YMCA, and uh, we're, we're so hot up we had just one computer. So the, 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 the website was up during the day, uh, and I was coding at night, seven days a week, all the time. Um, and I, I uh, sort of briefly had a girlfriend in that period, and in order to be with me, she had to sleep in the office. So uh, work hard, like, and it, I mean, every waking hour, that's, that's the, the thing I would, I would say, if, if you, particularly if you're starting a company. Um, and I mean, if you do simple math, say like, okay, if somebody else is working 50 hours and you're working 100, uh, you'll get twice as, done, as much done in the course of a year as, the, as uh, the other company. If you want to learn something faster, you must first and foremost know the connection between what you want to learn and your dream life your real lifestyle that you want to have. I, I tell people all the time, like, don't just come up with things you want to learn, because guess what, we want to learn everything. By human build, we are curious animals. We're deathly curious. I mean, we are literally the curiosity killed the cat sort of society right now. Everyone wants to learn 50 new things immediately, but no one ever learns anything. Why? Because it's not real for them. It's a transient desire. If you want to become a great learner, it has to be attached to a dream life of yours. A true, uh, a true lifestyle that you see for yourself. Studying must be a priority. You can make all your dreams become a reality if you stop studying just when you feel like it and make it a priority. You're studying after you go out with your friends. You're studying after you've watched TV. You're leaving your studying until you're bored and have nothing to do. Then you study. You're not serious. You're not eating it. You're not dreaming it. It's not haunting your dreams at night. You pass your exams, you get to the top of the class. It will open doors, I promise you that. You've gotta shut the TV down. You've gotta shut certain people down. You need to optimize your life, that homework, you can get it done. That exam, you can get it done. That degree, you can get it done. But you're doing it in your leisure time. Listen to me. You're not making your studying a priority. You're not making your education a priority. There's some stuff you gotta shut down. Whatever your goals are, it can get done. You can get it done. And how will we do? We will do it by listing our priorities. We will do it by shutting everything else out. We will do it by saying no to everything that does not apply to our priorities. We will do it by getting focused, laser focused. We will do it by waking up every single day and taking every moment of the day and focusing on what's a priority. And then, 
When we get to the end of the year, we will not be disappointed. We will not be defeated. We will not be destroyed. When we get to the end of the year, we will not be disappointed. This will not be another disappointing year. This will not be another year of excuses. This will not be another year where you avoid work. This will be the year that you stop half doing stuff. You stop half doing your homework. You stop half doing your exams. You stop half doing your studying. This will be the year of execution. If not now, when? If not you, who? Look, I never told you it would be easy, but it's doable. It's not going to be easy, but it will get done. Let me give you an example. This is how I did it. I turned my paper in four weeks early, and she sent it back to me with a whole bunch of red. I fixed it and gave it back to her, and she gave me some more red. So I fixed it again and gave it back to her, and she told me, you don't really write that well. I don't know if you're going to be able to get a 4.0. I said, look, where I come from, it's not all about skill. Let me tell you something. You will miss a lot of shows fooling with me. Your family will not get a lot of family time. You will check my paper over and over and over. I'm being real. I will not stop turning in my paper. You will keep grading my paper. And if I were you, I would help me to make the corrections so you don't got to keep dealing with me. But if you think I'm going to quit, I promise you, I will be at your office hours, every office hour. I will haunt you in your sleep until I achieve what I want to achieve. There are people with incredible talent and no motivation. And then there are other people who are willing to work their tails off who don't have a natural ability but will become successful because they're so determined. You know, every time you lose at something, you're one step closer to winning the next time. The difference between successful people and unsuccessful people is simple. Unsuccessful people give up. The hardest thing in life to learn is to lose. You win, you're happy. You get a high five, your friends are happy. That's easy. It's your ability to take a loss, get up the next day, dust yourself off, and keep going that really determines your true character. I just want to encourage everybody out there, listen to me. Your day is coming. But you got to do me a favor. You got to sit down and you got to look at your life and you got to look at the work you're putting in. You got to look at how much you procrastinate. You've got to pay attention and look at where you're going wrong. Look at where you can improve and you put it all together. And before you know it, you've got the grades that you were aiming for. You've got the career you were aiming for. You've got the car and the house you were dreaming of. If you're willing to grind it out, you can get it done. This is kind of hard to understand, but sometimes you can try so hard at something. Sometimes you can be so, so prepared and still fail. And with every time you fail, it's painful, it causes sadness. And especially as I saw last night, it causes disappointment. I've often said a man's character is not judged after he celebrates a victory by, by, but by what he does when his back is against the wall. So no matter how great the setback, how severe the failure, you never give up. You never give up. You pick yourself up, you brush yourself off, you push forward, you move on, you adapt, you overcome. That is what I believe. Everybody here, everybody watching, I won't be stopped. I can't be stopped. You're either committed or you aren't. You're either willing to do everything it takes whatever that might be, or you aren't. You either are willing to, to go through hell and high water and fire and brimstone to get to your goals, or you aren't. Work on yourself. 
Work on your focus. You cannot stop. You got to work. The problem with you is you see difficult as something negative. I want you to see difficult differently. Are you hearing me? I need you to push through that stuff. Push through it. You can't get through it. The more you go through, the more difficult it is, the more challenging it is. Listen to me, the harder it is. Are you hearing me? The more challenging it is, all you're doing, baby, is building muscle. In life, you're either going to a storm, in a storm, or you coming out. It's a part of life. There's no way around it. So just be careful not to allow the trials or the tribulations to consume you. I don't care if you're a billionaire, I don't care if you're a CEO of one of the most important companies, I don't care if you're an entertainer. Like, I don't care who you are. You can go to the moon. We all have problems. What I'm trying to tell you is this though. Problems are a part of life. But guess what? They're not life. It's not going to be easy. There are moments when you're going to doubt yourself. There are rough times are going to come, but they have not come to stay. No matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, you've got to make it your personal business to make it happen.